Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm 90, verses 1 through 12. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, wherever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, you mortals, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger. By your wrath we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sign. The days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80, if we so teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Our New Testament reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30, the parable of the talents. Jesus said, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, what they have will be taken away. 
As for this worthless slave, slow, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are. I have completely lost track of how many months were six months, seven months, eight months. What is it? Two years into this pandemic now? I don't know what it is. I had seen recently some posts on social media that said, what are your goals for the next five years? And one person said, my goal for the next five years is to get through 2020. It feels like the days are just dragging on. One day, even worse. It's even worse during this time of pandemic. I noticed this when I was a hospital chaplain in Kansas City. I would go visit patients and I learned very quickly from them and from my own experience in the hospital that in the hospital there is no real time. That there are not 60 seconds in a minute that there's only two times in the hospital. There's only two fast where weeks just disappear, and there's only two slow where minutes and hours seem to drag on. In fact, that seems to be true of times of great trial, of great suffering. The time either slips away or time drags on. And it seems to be that when we are suffering, time feels like an enemy. Think about it. When you are in pain, you want either the pain to go away, that would be wonderful, or the time to slip away. This is the way that time works when we are suffering. It either goes too quickly or too slowly. The psalmist this morning proclaims that God has been our dwelling place throughout all generations, throughout all times. God has been our place to live and hide and rest secure. Whether it feels like the time goes too slowly or too quickly, God has been and will be our hiding place, our dwelling place, our temple, our home. And yet living in God's temple, living in God's dwelling place, living in God's home means that time matters. We are reminded that we are mortal. We are reminded that this life 
that we live in this body in the here and now is temporary. And we're seeing that all around us. It's a difficult pill to swallow. I was reminded that just this past week, as what was a joyous occasion for my family when we gathered for my brother's wedding, also was a time of sorrow because it was the first time we had gathered since my dad had passed. And yes, there were tears shed. How many days has it been since he passed? How many months? I don't know. They've gone too slowly. Or they've gone too quickly. They seem to just disappear. If we're not careful, life can itself become this way. And the psalmist knows this. He knows this of mortality, that our life, for us, time is temporary. For a thousand years in God's sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a all of our days pass away under God's wrath. And our years come to end like a sigh. We are living through times that feel like that. So what do we do? What do we do when one day blends into another, when one week blends into another, when yesterday feels like today, and today we assume is going to be like tomorrow? We count our days. We count our days, as the psalmist says, that we might gain a wise heart. Now, what does it mean to count our days? I think first and foremost, it means for us to live each day in gratitude. A good way to count our days might be to end each day with a prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for this experience today. Thank you for this person or this opportunity. Thank you for this tiny little joy, even if it was a bird singing outside of your window. Find something each day to be thankful for. This is a great way to count your days and to make each day count. Another way to count our days is to invest in the lives of others. And this is exactly what Jesus was talking about with the parable of the talents. You see, to each of these servants was given a gift. Some of the gifts were larger than others, but honestly, it really doesn't matter. Each of them were given a gift. And you, too, are given a gift. Often we think about those as spiritual gifts, maybe the gift of prayer or the gift of hospitality or the gift of love and compassion. And those are certainly things that are great that we can share with one another. Maybe you have the gift of a listening ear, and you can call on a friend and listen to them in their time of need. Have you ever thought about the fact that each day is a gift? 
Each day is a new opportunity to make a difference, to be a blessing, to show the world and to show God that God has made a difference in your life. My default mode when things get difficult is to hunker down, is to curl up with a blanket and a good book and something warm to drink. That is my safe place. That is my happy place. That is, if the book is good enough, that is the place where I can get away from everything. Maybe, though, in doing that, maybe I'm, how many days have we been given? How much time have we been given to use to show love? There are people all around us who need to hear from us, who need to see us, and need to know that they are loved. And so let us together use our talents and count our days and make each day count. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith as is printed in the bulletin. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God. God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Dear friend, please count each day in gratitude, giving thanks to God for each moment and forevermore. And all God's people said,